whether you're an Aztec booster or alum or a fan or you're just curious about what name, image, and likeness looks like. Maybe maybe you're a potential advertiser. I don't know. I think it's worth checking out. I know I'm very curious about how all this is going to work as well. Let's say hello to the athletic director at San Diego State, John David Wicker, joining us on Extra 1360. Good afternoon, J.D. How are you? I am well, Darren. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you very much. It's nice to chat with you. Nice to hear your voice. Yes, indeed. Glad to uh, have a chance to catch up. It's been a minute. And yeah, it's a uh, good time. It's finally Chamber of Commerce weather again in San Diego after a couple tough days. But, uh, you know, it's good to be here. Where do you live that you got a Chamber of Commerce type day? Uh, well, right now on campus, it's beautiful. It's sunny, uh, mid seventies. And I mean, it's going to be 97 at my house in San Diego tomorrow. <laughs> so we're excited to have the pool ready to go. So <laughs> what time should we be over? We'll bring the beer and the barbecue. Well, let's see what well, you're 12 to three. So I'll expect you about three thirty. Perfect. I think we can make it there by then. Yeah. I don't think by the coastline, I don't think it's quite as nice as it might be up there on the Mesa or in Santee JD. So I uh, appreciate gotcha. it though. Right. Looking forward to the heat wave here over the next couple of days. Yes, it is going to be hot. All right. Uh, you looking forward to the Masters coming up this weekend? Absolutely. Uh, you know, J.J. Spawn had a great weekend at the Texas Valero Open last weekend, so maybe they, maybe he stays hot going into Augusta. And then, you know, it's it's just a matter of time, and hopefully it's this Sunday that Xander uh, is going to get that first uh, major championship. He's already gotten a, a gold medal from Tokyo last year, so let's hope he can – get that green jacket this weekend that'd be awesome i think it would be great i like it too i like that you're focusing in on the san diego state aztecs here who cares about tiger woods we've already seen that we don't need to see that yeah, tiger who yeah, exactly <laughs> I mean, stop. Why, why, why are you crashing the party tiger we got some aztecs that we can talk about <laughs> upcoming this exactly. weekend uh jd i drive past snapdragon stadium every day as i often tell the audience i had a texter text into the show it was this person's, uh, at least his observation. He seems to think that all the seats are in Snapdragon Stadium. I don't know that that's accurate, but uh, what's the the very latest happening there? Just a couple of months to go before its debut. I, You know, Snapdragon is, we're still on schedule, so we're very excited about that. Still on budget. Definitely excited about that. And, yeah, we're pretty, we're getting close on the seats. We'll wrap up everything by the end of this month. Uh, we're more into the premium areas right now, uh, the student section, the safe standing seats that we're installing, uh, where, you know, it encourages people to stand. There's a rail to prop up on. You see it a lot of MLS stadiums now in the supporter section. Those will be the last seats that will go in, is my understanding. So, but everything, you know, upper deck wise and outside of the premium areas, all of those seats are in. So we're, we've made really good progress. A lot of drywall is up. Um, you can really start to see all the various areas coming to shape. All right. Looking forward to it. Like I said, I mean, can't wait to actually see it. You know, be there standing on the ground itself. J.D. Wicker joining us. He's the athletic director at San Diego State. Uh, J.D., did you enjoy? Were you satisfied with the way, not from the Aztecs' perspective, but were you overall satisfied with the NCAA tournament? Uh, you know, it was obviously exciting. And, yes, I'm, I'm still haven't quite gotten over, uh, you know, Fort Worth. But we'll get there. The basketball team is, you know, doing a great job at this point getting ready for next year. Uh, but overall, I thought both tournaments were, you know, really good. The, um, you know, it was fun to see South Carolina and Don Staley get another championship on the women's side. And, you know, it, the semifinal games, I think, were a little more exciting than the, the final championship game was. And then, you know, with the men's tournament, you know, I, I haven't seen the number for Duke, North Carolina yet, but I'm sure it was a big number, uh, probably depressed a little bit because it was on cable as opposed to big CBS. And then last night, I, I'll be honest, I thought North Carolina – I didn't think North Carolina would have any gas left in the tank. So to get the game that we got last night was, was just a bonus. Totally. And, and you could sort of see too, right? I mean, they had players that were puking on the court, do different uh -huh. guys hopping around like, man, like they, this, uh, I mean, college basketball, college athletics at times, you know, knowing that you're playing in this, in this finite amount of time in the shortened window, I just thought, you know, that, that really spoke well of the college sports experience, just watching, the Carolina Tar Heel players battling everything that they were battling last night. Dude's getting elbowed in the head, and you know there they are, right at the end of the game, still very much in that thing. 
Yeah, there's a, you know, that's the great thing. There's a lot of passion around your, you know, your institution uh, and the sport, support that you have. It's different than, you know, the professional model and, you know, so many different ways. Uh, and I think I saw, I can't remember who it was that tweeted it out that, you know, uh, you know, at the end of last night's game, would you rather have had that opportunity or would you rather be in the, you know, have bypassed college and gone straight to the D league or playing for overtime, a lead or somebody like that. I mean, last night was pretty sensational and just getting into the tournament as a whole is, I mean, it's a great feeling for those young men and young women to have that, you know, to have that opportunity. Well, it's interesting, JD. I mean, let's let's spend another second on this, and and then you know, obviously, the name, image, likeness stuff today that you guys announced is is what we'll turn our attention to. But you know, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. I wonder, I wonder now, with the benefit of of time, right? Like emotional as it was, losing to Creighton in the first round, I mean, a lot of fans upset. I think it speaks to the fact that expectations exist at San Diego State for its basketball program. But all in all, now, how do you how do you evaluate the tournament's done? the basketball season as a whole, uh, what you thought of it, and and how you're feeling here a couple of weeks removed from the Aztecs being bounced. Yeah, man, you look back at this season, and, you know, we had a, a two-week uh, stoppage with COVID. You know, you had that whole roller coaster, uh, you know, and just the, the plugging in some pieces. You lost some, you know, some kids that had been in the program for four or five years. The previous year, you're plugging in some new kids. We were, you know, youthful at some spots and very old in others. And, I, you know, I'll, I'll say this. I think our coaching staff, this may have been the best coaching job that they've done in the Brian Dutcher era, just to put everything together and navigate all the issues that they had to navigate. You haven't had, you know, a regular fall, spring, summer since, you know, the beginning of the 2019-2020 season. And to put all those pieces together and do what we did. And, yeah, it, trust me, no one is more disappointed than the student athletes and that coaching staff as to, you know, how Fort Worth, you know, ended. But at the same time, we were really good last year. And we were, you know, our last four losses, two in the regular season, one in the conference championship game, one in the NCAA tournament, were by a combined five points. So, um we did a lot of really good things last year. We know we want we want to do better. We know our fans want us to do better. So that's something that, you know, the coaching staff is working really hard right now. And so are our student athletes getting back in the gym and working out. J.D. Wicker joining us on Extra 1360. Well, there you go. I know a lot of you guys were wondering, you know, is this a coach on the hot seat and, you know, pressure and turning up heat and all that. But J.D. Wicker just said it. You, you really feel like this was Brian Dutcher's best job since he's taken over in the five years. I know it's hard because of the COVID year. And we'll never know, you know, we'll never know. But yeah. but in, from where you sit, this is as good a job as he's done since he's been head coach. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I I think it's laughable that people are, you know, saying that Brian Dutcher would be on the hot seat. That's, you know, in my mind, that's ridiculous. I mean, it's as bad as a, a certain writer writing that we should have fired Rocky Long back in like 20, you know, 13 or 14 or something like that. So um, look where our programs are. So, yeah, Brian Dutcher's doing a phenomenal job. Our assistant coaching staff is doing a phenomenal job. And we have great young men who really care. And they're going to get better from last year. Well, I'll, I'll learn, we've all learned one thing here about J.D. Wicker. He's got a long memory. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's sitting out there in Arizona right now like, what? What? What happened there? <laughs> all right. <laughs> San Diego State Athletics launches Aztec Advantage, a comprehensive name, image, and likeness program. Aztec Advantage program prepares athletes for NIL changes. J.D., let's talk about this. This is a new frontier for college athletics, and you are are sitting in the middle at your position right now at at an incredible time for college athletics. Uh, What are we talking about here today with Aztec Advantage? Yeah, You know, NIL uh, was introduced or legislated last summer, and we have taken, you know, a pretty, you know, cautious uh, approach to it. We really wanted to understand, you know, see how things were going to play out. Uh, you know, we're one of the few schools out there that have hired someone full time that that's all they do is help manage our NIL program. And we've spent a lot of time looking at what everyone else around the country is doing to develop you know, internally, what are the best policies and procedures that we can to help our student athletes be able to go out and realize 
uh, you know, the revenue that they can earn off their name, image, and likeness. So our partnership with Open Doors uh, that actually started pre-COVID um, with some elements that we were doing before that, but, you know, helping student athletes build their social media presence so that they could then turn around and monetize that social media presence. And now Open Doors has, you know, the ability for, you know, to tie into companies to create deals for your NIL. Uh, our Aztec Empower is going to allow, um, you know, whoever it is, whether it's a business, whether it's a fan, whether it's an alum, somebody like that to connect and create an NIL deal with our student athletes. We've also worked with other companies, a company called Team Ultimus, to help educate our students on, you know, contracting, uh, taxes, uh, what do you need to look for in an NIL deal, really, you know, the kind of the nuts and bolts and back of house to, you know, make sure our student athletes, when they go out and, you know, hopefully start generating a little revenue, these are the things you need to do to make sure it's good, you know, good business decisions are being made. So we want to, you know, give our athletes as much education as we possibly can and then, you know, help them as we're allowed to go out and take advantage of their name, image, and likeness and make some money. So you and I are having this conversation today, and the university, the athletic department, released a, state, uh, released a statement today. So so who who is the target of this messaging? Are, are, are you doing all of this for the benefit of your student athletes? Are you doing this for your alumni base? Are you soliciting potential um, um, uh, name, image, likeness, sponsors, people who, who potentially could say, well, you know, I love what they're doing at the basketball pro with the basketball program. And I want to be involved in that capacity. I, I wonder like, what is your, who's the target of today's conversation and today's announcement? So this is more for, you know, you need all of those folks because we've been educating our student athletes on all of these different developments. Now, you know, we're still helping them understand everything that we're doing. So this is going to help them, you know, see that more as they get to see, as they see this going out to the general public. But this is also to, you know, help our student athletes create opportunities with whoever it is out there outside of, you know, the university itself uh, to create those deals, whether it's in the business community, it's, uh, you know, an alum who wants, you know, uh, Asia Avenger on the basketball team to sing her happy birthday or to, you know, for someone to have, you know, I, I want Asia Avenger to sing my wife happy birthday. So I, you know, pay her 50 bucks and she records singing happy birthday and, you know, you text message it to her, whatever it may be. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's, it's limitless, you know, kind of what they're able to do and they can go out and create things or they can go, uh, onto the Open Doors platform, and you know, Open Doors is working with you know companies national, uh, nationwide, where you can you know pitch different deals, whatever it may be. So lots of different options for people to explore, and you know, we want to help our kids again take advantage of that NIL and make a little money. Okay, good. So you guys are trying to streamline the process here, so it doesn't just look like the Wild West where everybody's just doing everything that they want to do, and then it becomes a little bit difficult. Do do student athletes have to use this service? Do you require San Diego State student athletes to use the the services that you're providing to enhance their ability to earn via name, image, and likeness, or can they still operate on their own capacity? No, they can still operate on their own capacity. The SB 26, the bill that was passed, does say that they need to disclose what they're doing to us, um, and that's you know that's important on a couple different you know fronts. One. You know, we can make sure they're following correct policy procedures, especially as it works around, you know, uh, branding items such as, you know, the SDSU marks. But it also allows us to, you know, we're not going to tell them to do or not do a particular, you know, whatever might be pitched to them or whatever they're signing up to do. But we can also say, hey, you might want to take a look at this. or You might want to consult with a lawyer on this particular piece or you know, wow, this, you know, they're really asking for a lot in your rights right here. So you might want to follow up on that. Um, and then it also allows us, you know, at the end of the year, uh, you know, depending on how we track things to be like, okay, you did, you know, here's the 10 things that you reported to us. Make sure you account for that properly. If you have to file taxes on it or whatever that may be. So it's a helpful hand with a little bit of oversight sprinkled in. Yep. You guys get Pretty a cut? Much. What now? No. Does, does the athletic department get a, get a cut of any potential uh, money raised through the, nope. the service? We, uh, it's all going back to the, you know, depending on the service, 
you know, if you're signing up with an open doors or somebody like that, there may be a percentage that either the business is paying or they may get a small percentage of what the student athletes doing. I don't think that's involved in our P in the, the two that we opened today, but there are different services out there that, you know, may take a cut of what the student athletes making. But from our standpoint, this is not a money-making venture for San Diego State University. This is us trying to put as much money back into the pockets of our student athletes as we can. I love it. And it's for current student athletes. Could this, could this at all be used in recruitment, right? Uh, could this be used for, for outgoing student athletes or is this strictly JD, this service and opportunity for current student athletes in whatever sport it is that they're competitive in, using this service to enhance their own earning potential via name, image, and likeness? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's, you know, we do work with uh, previous student athletes. I mean, you can go buy a Kawhi jersey uh, in the bookstore today because we've, you know, we've done, you know, work through, I don't know if it's NBA Players Association or his agent or what exactly, but so we have a deal with Kawhi where, you know, revenue generated from the sale of his jersey is going back to Kawhi. It's also going back to San Diego State University as you look at that. So, and, you know, we've looked at it, you know, some of the things that we may work, you know, work on in the future are NFTs and, you know, NFTs are great moments and we can again pair with our uh, alumni to do those types of things. We're doing uh, jerseys uh, for the hundredth season of Aztec football coming up. We'll, you know, we'll be selling jerseys next year. I think that's the plan right now. Uh, you know, certain alumni, certain famous alumni from past years, and that's a deal that we did with them. So, and different schools have approached that different ways, trying to create much larger opportunities for their alumni to come back into. That's not something we've ventured into really yet, but, you know, something that we'll probably look at in the near future. All right. So, and this is a great opportunity. I was playing around on the site a little bit earlier today. You, you can, you can actually, if I read this or if, if, if I was doing this right, JD, you know, you can target a specific athlete if that person's available and amenable to this sort of stuff. You know, let's say there's somebody out there who's a huge men's soccer fan or women's soccer fan. They can actually yep. scroll through and find the men's and women's soccer programs, find athletes who might be available or open to this sort of opportunity there. And if for whatever reason somebody has an attachment to the men's and women's soccer program, they can go ahead and they can do that sort of stuff, which I think is very interesting that it's not just, hey, here's a bunch of money. What do you got for me? You know, you can actually yep. go specifically for what it is that you're looking for, which makes a ton of sense. Yeah. No, again, we're trying to, you know, leave it as broad based as we possibly can and allow our student athletes to do what's comfortable for them. How, how have they been doing? I, I really know nothing about San Diego State athletes who have or haven't uh, made a, a single dollar from name, image and likeness from football to basketball, the most popular to anywhere in between. So so how has that gone from your experience, the athletes that, that have figured out a way? I know there was a moving company, right, that did something with your football program, yep. which was funny. Um, but outside of that, I must admit, I don't know all that much about how it's gone so far. Yeah, you know, it, it, it kind of all depends on, you know, who the student athlete is. You know, we had a football player last year who had a deal with a, a meat company. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, there he was holding a tomahawk uh, <laughs> steak uh, and posted about it, you know, and things like that. So I think we're of what we're aware of, we're well over, you know, 200 uh, various NIL deals that different student athletes have done. So our students are definitely out there doing things that, you know, we haven't had the, you know, national television commercial uh, that I think a Clemson quarterback did or, you know, things like that. But our students are definitely, you know, they're definitely getting into it. They're definitely seeking deals out. And this is just going to, you know, allow us to do more uh, with that. Very uh I mean, this is an amazing, what a new frontier this is for you, huh? I mean, no way to, or was there a way to see this coming when you got into this business? Um, you know, things are, things are ever evolving in this world. Um, you know, the NCAA is evolving. It's, uh, you know, things have definitely changed quite a bit. They're going to change a lot probably over the next three to five years. So I don't know that it's, you know, I, I certainly don't have a crystal ball and can see what's coming down the road, but, you know, it, continuing to be student athlete centric and provide them uh, the best possible experience and uh, that we can, you're going to continue seeing that. Well, it's, it's like I said, it's really interesting stuff. I know a lot of people, I don't know exactly what they do, but who have gotten involved in name, image and likeness, 
Now, the website, goaztecs.com slash NIL for anybody that wants more information. I also have a different uh, as to, uh, a website, empoweraztecs.com. Are those the, the yeah. two places we want to refer people to? Yes. All right. Are you sponsoring anybody? Are you allowed to do that? I am not allowed to do that as a university uh, <laughs> employee. And they're not allowed to do certain things, right? Are they allowed to to endorse alcohol if they're over 21? Um, yes, I believe alcohol is allowed. Um, it would be as you start getting into, you know, various uh, areas where we kind of look at is what would we market uh, mm-hmm. as a university, as an athletic department versus what we would not market. Um so that's where those are the areas, or if there's something that, you know, whether it's state, local, state, or federally against the law, um, that would be another place we would not want you to venture into. Federal, federal law, not state law. Federal law. So federal, no, no state, cannabis. Local. Cannabis is out of the question. That, that would be, uh, from our standpoint at this point, yes. But for this point, right. Like you said, maybe maybe in a couple of years, but that's, that's a different conversation. Well, it's fascinating <laughs> stuff. It really is. I'm telling you, uh, for, for how much has changed. And- and guess what? We had name, image, and likeness this past season, and it was still really great basketball that we all just watched during the NCAA tournament. J.D., thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Great catching up. And look for Jonathan Rifkin tonight. He's going to be out there at Tony Gwynn Stadium. He's he's calling the game here on Extra 1360. Yep, it's going to be a, a beautiful night for baseball. We'll hope folks will uh, come out and check out the Aztecs playing, uh, I believe it's the Dirt Bags from Long Beach State. Got that right. See you there tonight. Thank you, J.D.